four high altitude objects shot down in just eight days by the U.S. military. Unprecedented moves in peacetime. One was the Chinese spy balloon, the other three unidentified over the U.S. and Canada. At the same time, Beijing says the U.S. has sent balloons into Chinese airspace dozens of times, something the White House promptly denied. Is the Chinese Communist Party retaliating against the U.S.? And are the three new objects also from China? What do you think? Let us know below and subscribe if you haven't already. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Four high altitude objects shot down in just eight days, an unprecedented string of events during peacetime. The U.S. military shot down the fourth object on Sunday. The Pentagon says it was shaped like an octagon and flew over Lake Horan, one of the Great Lakes, at around 20,000 feet. NTD's Jeremy Sandberg has more. Pentagon officials say the object was first tracked near Montana on Saturday. U.S. Air Force General Glenn Van Herc says two F-15 fighter jets were scrambled when it approached the U.S. border from Canada. Van Herc is head of North American Aerospace Defense Command, or NORAD. He says pilots lost track of the object when night fell. It was shot down Sunday over Lake Huron on the U.S.-Canada border by a U.S. F-16 fighter jet after being tracked across Wisconsin. Van Herc says it's likely to have fallen into Canadian waters and that recovery efforts are underway. He says the military has not been able to identify what the three most recent objects are, how they stay aloft, or where they are coming from, and that they are calling them objects, not balloons, for a reason. On Saturday, an American F-22 Raptor intercepted an unidentified object that Canada's defense minister described as cylindrical in nature. It was shot down over Canada's central Yukon Territory at an altitude of around 40,000 feet. Both President Biden and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau ordered the move. An unidentified object uh, entered unlawfully Canadian airspace. Uh, it represented a reasonable threat to civilian aircraft. Just one day earlier, an American F-22 took down an unidentified object near Dead Horse, Alaska. Some pilots reportedly said Friday's object interfered with their sensors. A defense official that spoke on the condition of anonymity said the military has not seen any evidence of the objects being extraterrestrial. Military officials say the mystery objects shot down Friday and Saturday were significantly smaller than the Chinese spy balloon recently brought down off the coast of South Carolina. Jeremy Sandberg, NTD News. Based on comments from Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, the United States believes the objects were balloons. He told ABC's This Week that he was briefed on Saturday night by President Joe Biden's National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan. U.S. officials are still trying to determine if China is responsible for the objects. Over in Taiwan, officials have revealed where balloons they discovered were coming from. They said dozens of Chinese military balloons have entered Taiwanese airspace in recent years, once a month on average. Beijing claims Taiwan as part of Chinese territory. Taiwan has its own constitution and democratically elected leaders and has never been ruled by the Chinese Communist Party. Mainland China and Taiwan are separated by the Taiwan Strait, with only 70 miles between them at the narrowest point. The Chinese Communist Party seemingly retaliating against recent spy balloon accusations. Beijing now says the U.S. has sent balloons into Chinese airspace many times. China said Monday that high-altitude balloons belonging to the U.S. had flown over Chinese airspace more than 10 times since 2022 adding that Washington should, quote, undergo some self-reflection and avoid smearing China. The White House promptly denied the accusation. National Security Council spokeswoman Adrian Watson said in a statement that any claim that the U.S. government operates surveillance balloons over the PRC, People's Republic of China, is false. The U.K. is getting more alert following the grounding of balloons in the U.S. and Canada. U.K. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak on Monday gave assurances that his government will protect the public from the threat of Chinese spy balloons. Well, I want people to know that we'll do whatever it takes to keep the country safe. His comments come after an announcement from U.K. Defense Secretary Ben Wallace. 
He revealed Britain will conduct a review into what the airspace intrusions mean for UK security. Wallace noted he would shoot down such a spy balloon if it appeared in the UK and added that the intrusion show the global threat picture is changing for the worse. Next, a bilateral meeting at the Pentagon. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin hosted Canadian National Defense Minister Anita Anand on Friday to talk shared cooperation. Here's what was on their agenda. Working together through NATO to counter Russian aggression against Ukraine, as well as their shared commitment to issues like modernizing the North American Aerospace Defense Command, protecting Arctic security, and maintaining a free and open Indo-Pacific. Those goals come as Chinese aggression persists in the Indo-Pacific and as Beijing and Moscow set their sights on control of the Arctic. Beyond those goals, Austin voiced U.S. gratitude to Canada. That's for the country's help in tracking and analyzing the recent high-altitude balloon and for its support for Washington's response to the incident, which the U.S. considers an unacceptable violation of sovereignty by Beijing. Following the meeting, Secretary Austin boarded a plane Monday to Ukraine. There, he'll attend the ninth meeting of the Ukraine Defense Contact Group and meet with his NATO defense counterparts. The U.S. setting off a test launch for a special ballistic missile, the weapon able to fly across continents from California. The missile was unarmed. The U.S. Air Force, the launch, sought to test the defense system. The U.S. Air Force called it a routine test, but it comes just after the Chinese spy balloon traversed the U.S. Three days before the California missile test, news broke that China now has more land-based launchers for intercontinental missiles than the U.S. That's according to the man overseeing America's nuclear forces, General Anthony Cotton. Wall Street Journal first reported on the news. Congressman Mike Rogers, chair of the House Armed Services Committee, also confirmed the information. Worth noting, the U.S. still has more nuclear weapons than China. Many Chinese silos for launching missiles are still empty, but Beijing is growing its nuclear capability to play catch up with Russia and the U.S. Beijing is projected to have 1,500 nuclear warheads by 2035, up from the current estimate of 400. Across the Pacific Ocean, a Chinese Navy survey ship entered Japanese waters on Sunday. That's according to Japan's defense ministry. Chinese ships have repeatedly entered Japanese waters, mostly near the Senkaku Islands, claimed both by Japan and China. The latest of those events took place in December. The voyages are a long-time flashpoint between the two countries. But this time is different. The Chinese ship was seen near Yakushima, an undisputed area of Japanese territory. Tensions are rising in the South China Sea. The Philippines is accusing China of using a laser on Philippine Coast Guard troops and temporarily blinding a ship's crew. Here are the details. According to the Philippine Coast Guard, its vessel was interrupted during a Navy mission last Monday. It was delivering food and supplies to troops in the disputed waterway. They say a Chinese Coast Guard ship directed a military-grade laser at the ship that temporarily blinded its crew at the bridge. The incident took place at the 2nd Thomas Shoal, located just over 100 nautical miles off the Philippine province of Palawan. China has previously been accused of using lasers in the region. China responded on Monday, calling its Coast Guard's actions lawful. China claims almost all of the South China Sea as part of Chinese territory. An international court has ruled that claim unlawful. Two longtime U.S. allies boosting their security ties to counter Beijing, both of them located nearby communist China. Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. just finished his Japan visit over the weekend. The two countries signed an agreement on disaster relief Thursday. The deal is seen as a precursor to closer security ties between the two nations at a time of heightened tensions with China. And after our meeting, I can confidently say that our strategic partnership is stronger than ever as we navigate together the rough waters buffeting our region. The Philippines has increasingly sided with the United States in its regional tussle with China. Recently, the Philippines signed an agreement granting the U.S. greater access to its military bases. 
The country's Subic Bay used to be America's largest overseas naval base. Now, the ammunition bunkers and barracks lay abandoned, overrun by weeds. But all that is set to change in the near future, as rotating batches of American forces are on the way. The move is intended to strengthen military alliances in the Indo-Pacific. This to better counter China and handle any future confrontations over Taiwan. At the same time, the Philippines appears to be distancing itself from Beijing. Last month, Marcus told Chinese leader Xi Jinping that the Philippines would pursue an independent foreign policy. But economic reliance on Beijing may trigger concerns for the southeastern Asian country. China has been its biggest trade partner for six years in a row. U.S. microchip giant Intel reportedly weighing whether to boost investment in Vietnam. Here's more. The company has already poured $1.5 billion into the nation. That's to expand its chip testing and packaging plant there, Intel's largest worldwide. But sources say Intel could choose to add more billions of dollars to the tally to be carried out over the future years. The investment would signal a growing role for Vietnam in the global supply chain for semiconductors. That's good news for Hanoi, as companies and countries around the world look to lessen reliance on China and Taiwan. Asked about the possible investment plan, Intel told reporters it had not announced any new investments, noting that Vietnam is an important part of its global manufacturing network. Sources added that Intel is also weighing alternative investment in Singapore and Malaysia. Fellow chip giant South Korea's Samsung opened a research facility in Vietnam late last year. Europe is not sending astronauts to China's space station at least not in the near future. That's despite Europe having prepared astronauts for potential visits to China's Tiangong space station. That's according to the Director General of European Space Station. The agency manages Europe's space program. The agency has been training its astronauts with their Chinese counterparts. And in 2017, it said the goal was to fly European astronauts on the Chinese space station from 2022. The current International Space Station is slated to retire in 2030. It involves five members, the U.S., Russia, Japan, Europe and Canada. But Russia is going to pull out in 2024 to set up its own space station. China has invited many countries to join research activities in its space station. The U.S. did not sign on. Beijing said the space station would host scientific projects from 17 nations including Switzerland, Poland, Germany, and Italy. A brutal persecution that began two decades ago, still happening today in mainland China. The victims are followers of a spiritual practice called Falun Gong. According to U.S.-based Falun Gong information website Minghui, 117 practitioners were sentenced for their beliefs in January this year. Among them, more than 30 were over 60 years old the longest prison term they received, reaching seven and a half years. Those 117 arrests took place across 15 provinces. What's more, the CCP also seized money from the Falun Gong practitioners. Measures reportedly included extortion and blackmail through the courts and police. The amount totaled up to $100,000. According to its website, Falun Gong is an ancient cultivation method based on the principles of truthfulness, compassion, and forbearance. It originated in China, but has gained popularity in more than 70 countries worldwide. But in 1999, the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, waged a violent campaign against Falun Gong. Since then, millions of people have been detained, tortured, and killed for their beliefs. Some even had their organs harvested while they were still alive. The persecution continues to this day. And in the financial sector, global investment banks are looking to breathe new life into a key business sector, China's property market. To do it, they are gauging how confident investors are in bonds from Chinese developers. Let's zoom in. Reports say banks like J.P. Morgan Chase, UBS Group, Credit Suisse Group, Guotai Junan International Holdings, and HSBC Holdings are driving the effort. They're reaching out to investors to pitch bonds from Chinese companies, including Country Garden Holdings, Hopsum Development Holdings, Road King Infrastructure, and Yon Lord Land Group. 
But efforts to revive the bond sales face major hurdles. Extremely high interest rates and other costs are gatekeeping many Chinese builders. Plus, uncertainty remains over the stability of Beijing's support and the current market rally. Dollar bonds from Chinese developers were once some of the world's most popular trades, but they've plummeted in the last two years amid the country's massive housing slump and a clampdown from Beijing. Global political tensions are also playing a role. In a statement, J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dixon said maintaining international relations with China is a high priority, adding that hot topics like the alleged Chinese spy balloon incident won't impact his bank. He says he plans to travel to China in the future. Some context. The bank recently found itself in the hot seat over its China relations. Senator Marco Rubio took aim at the company over its new partnership with ByteDance, TikTok's Chinese parent company. The app has been accused of feeding U.S. user data to Beijing. At the same time, J.P. Morgan recently got approval to buy full control of its joint venture with China. Back to the market. A turnaround for Chinese developer bonds first began last November. That's when Beijing started shifting its policy toward prioritizing economic recovery over pandemic restrictions. According to Bloomberg, bond prices rose for 13 weeks in a row, a new record. Adding to that boost, the property arm of a major Chinese conglomerate called Dalian Wanda Group struck a $400 million deal, returning to the country's primary market after a 16-month absence. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for two years. Here's what to look out for in our second half. A Chinese spy balloon plus three unidentified objects shot down of the U.S. and Canada. What do the incidents mean for the nation? We spoke to Arthur Herman, senior fellow at the Hudson Institute, to find out more on that, plus other threats from the communist regime. The full episode is available on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up, click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you tomorrow.